Hey there, my name is Chris. Welcome to the Citizens Forum. Today we're talking about decolonization and the Trans Mountain Pipeline. I'd like to introduce Raven and Antonia. Raven, can you do a territorial acknowledgement? Hi, Uglami, Atira, Tiluak, Kwok Kwok. My name is Raven. Um, I'm Inuit, Dene, Metis, Scottish, and Irish. Uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge that we are visitors on the territory of the Kwangan speaking peoples, the Esquimalt, Saanich, and Songhees nations. Thanks. Yeah, I'm Antonia Paquin, and I also want to express my gratitude for living and residing on the Kwangan speaking people's territory. Um, I'm a grassroots organizer for climate justice, organizing youth climate strikes, and working with Rise and Resist and Green New Deal organizing. I'd like to ask how we're all feeling about the Trans Mountain Pipeline finalization. Oh, it's a heavy thing. That was a, not surprising, but really, really heavy, heavy announcement. Um, feeling a lot of grief, um, a lot of hurt, uh, just uh, feeling deeper that, that this is indeed a war on indigenous peoples, a war on the land. This is not something that is consensual. Um, there's been indigenous, uh, you know, uh, advisory where they're going to specifically poverty forced indigenous communities and offering money um, to, to get consent for, for a lot of these things. So it's, it's feeling really backhanded and honestly quite corrupt and it's, it's very disheartening. Mm -hmm. um, but too, I, I feel strong in this knowing that uh, while the pipeline may be approved, it's not something um, we as indigenous peoples, we as the humans of this planet are going to let happen, not for the children, not for the land and not for the water. Yeah, I'm feeling definitely a lot. Um, yeah, when I heard about the announcement, I was really fired up and just wanted to like act as soon as possible. And I guess I felt grateful that I'm on the team of people that are working to stop the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Um, yeah, and not surprised. I mean, I guess we kind of saw it coming. Um, but I guess it's furthering my disillusionment and distrust of the Canadian government. Um, Canada has this international reputation of being, yeah, friendly people who love nature and welcoming and inclusive. But I think like the global stage is starting to really question that. Um, Greta Thunberg um, made a made a post on Twitter about it um, that uh, two days ago uh, the climate emergency, the national climate emergency, was declared, um, and then the following day the announcement about this enormous fossil fuel expansion project was announced. So, does that sound a bit contradictory? I think so. Yeah. Um, and then I also just wanted to highlight. Um, when we use these words, climate emergency and sixth ma mass extinction, um, we say those words, but in terms of understanding the fullness of the fullness of what that means, um, that 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 means like violence, violent revolution. That means like billions of creatures, like species going extinct. That means also potentially human extinction. This is an existential threat. And it's, it's such an enormous thing to try to take in that yeah. it's not very easy to let it in. Um, so yeah, um, taking time to like really sit with that fullness and actually taking time to let that pass through us. I've personally cried uh, a lot about it. I won't right now, but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So those are my thoughts and feelings. And then just really fired up. I'm really grateful that we're organizing around the pipeline. So shout out to anyone who's free this coming Saturday who's um, in Victoria or in the surrounding region. Um, we've organized a march on Saturday that starts at 8 a.m. at Centennial Square, downtown Victoria. And we're going to be marching with the Tiny House Warriors from here all the way up to the... Island View Beach on Sawit territory. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so that's 20 kilometers, so bring your snacks and your running shoes, but it's also accessible to anyone. We've got a bus that we have as well, so please come out on Saturday, 8 in the morning to Centennial Square. Um, if you feel passionate about this Trans Mountain Pipeline, you're invited. Thanks, Antonio. I wanted to extend this question to you, Chris, as well. How, how are you feeling about Thank the announcement? You. Yeah, uh, I've spent the past eight weeks raising money towards protests and crew blockades, towards trying to stop this Trans Mountain Pipeline, trying to prove that there can be no access without consent. And the finalization of the pipeline, I think like most people, we weren't really surprised. You know, the Liberal government has failed us many times. <laughs> They're going to continue to fail us. Um, however, my grief was directed towards the whales. There are only 74 southern resident orcas left on planet Earth, and these orcas ranged in the tens and hundreds of thousands 200 years ago, and they still have so much spiritual value to the indigenous communities all along the West Coast. So how can we contextualize the Trans Mountain Pipeline in terms of reconciliation? How do you think, Raven? I, I don't think that's in any way a step towards reconciliation. I, I think um, it's a total violation of, of indigenous rights, um, and it's largely based on the the approval from um, democratically elected chiefs in, in communities, as, as opposed to I think we have five or six hereditary chiefs, and specifically they're notable because they're they're hereditary, they're uh, acknowledging their family lineage, upholding. Their indigenous communities, they are acknowledging the importance of, of our relationship with the land and the water. And that's why they are saying no to this pipeline. So, of course, the, the, the federal government of Canada, the, the corporations are going to these democratically elected chiefs who are largely now controlled through money. Their values have been skewed through forced poverty. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is not a consensual agreement. It is not a consensually approved pipeline. It is in no way an act of reconciliation. It's, it's quite the opposite, I believe. Yeah. Uh, talking about consent, is there anything that you'd like to add, Antonia? Sure, yeah. I think as someone who is part of a white settler culture, um, a descendant of colonizers and part of a culture that continues to colonize, I think that when we're throwing the word reconciliation around, um, we need to really think about what that means. Um, and I think, no, I know that a huge amount of what we need to be doing right now is within this Western culture of, as white people, is thinking about uh, what are our culturally held values and beliefs and understandings and why do we not understand the fullness of having a relationship with land? And like, where are we coming from in our own ideologies? Um, so people talk about like cultural changes and like social changes that we need to, to really bring a lot of focus and fire to within this movement because we now are in a climate emergency. Um, so much of what we need to do is look at decolonizing. So that's something maybe we should talk about now is like the idea of decolonizing and, and, and what that looks like for us. Um, yeah. Decolonizing is for everyone. It is not merely just for the indigenous people that are here. It means taking our current philosophies of extraction and transforming them into philosophies of community mm -hmm. and philosophies of sustainability and living alongside the land and not living on the land and taking from the land. So there has to be a huge shift towards everyone's thinking in terms of uh, extraction and where fossil fuels are and how we are living in a climate emergency. The scientists on the UN have said that we have 11 years to reduce fossil fuel emissions to 45%. Otherwise, we hit 1.5 to 2 degrees of global warming. And what this looks like is 20 feet of flooding, forest fires on all continents um, throughout the entire year. 
the permafrost up north in the Yukon Territories has just melted, so we can expect forest fires creeping further north that way. Ocean acidification, the death of all of our salmon stalks, the whales, and all of the creatures in the forest who will no longer be able to breathe and inhabit the air that planet Earth once had sustainable for such, such a long time, thousands and thousands of years of no pipelines, and suddenly we have this philosophy of pipelines are now suddenly necessary to, <laughs> <laughs> to mere existence. <laughs> Yes. Wow. That, that's such such a stark reality. People are, you know, starting to wake up to. It's it's, it's really quite scary. I, I think really in this process of decolonization is, is starting to wake up to the reality of how the colonial systems of being, the colonial systems of power, are directly responsible for these detrimental effects through industrialization, through globalization. These these things are huge. You know. Um, and it's starting to wake up to the effects of colonization in our own lives, how this is, we are playing into the, uh, these roles of system and society, how we are perpetuating these, these ideas in our communities through individuality, you know? It, it's, I, so I think decolonization really is for everyone. I really like what you said there. Like, I really think it is for everyone. And seeing, starting to see how we all do play a role in a colonial system. What do you think decolonization looks like as a subjective experience? Sure, so I see decolonizing as questioning the values and ideologies that have been implanted within, within us as people that exist within this hyper-individualized industrial society of is extraction and resources and I need to buy stuff and that will make me happy and I'm an individual and, and that's the most important thing for me and, um, and, and subdue nature that yes. we cannot coexist with nature. Um, and uh, for me, I see uh, the climate action being very much in line with feminine resurgence. Um, and we've had three waves of feminism, I guess, like, okay, now we have the vote. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> we can be citizens that have agency <laughs> and we can work and have fair wages. But what about, what about feminine intelligence? And what about feminine ways of understanding what power can look like? What about feminine intuition? Um, and I think that there's a lot of mother bear fire that exists within women and also the feminine aspects of male identifying people um, that has been really subdued um, I think in Europe over the past few hundred years through things like the Inquisition um, and then feminine wisdom and intuition being subdued similar to nature. If nature is a non-entity, then we can extract from it. And mm -hmm. if women are also non-entities, then we can extract from women. Mm -hmm. And likewise um, with indigenous peoples and, too. Yeah. That's a similar issue, right? We're talking about these feelings of powerlessness in society. Uh, powerlessness as, as feminine people, powerlessness as, as indigenous peoples in the face of colonial systems and governments, which are largely run by white males. This has been a, an ongoing uh, piece, and, and I wanted to sp speak on um, community uh, as this act of empowerment, especially how uh, society, social stigmas, all of these things are perpetuated by isolation, you know? How do we empower each other? How do we connect? I think, really think community is the way forward to breaking down social walls of individualism and isolation. Absolutely. We can know that we're not alone in this. And moving forward and building community and building empowerment, we'll start to really feel that this is actually unbelievably exciting and we've really needed this. Mm. If you have anything to add. There has been this cognitive blind spot that has been handed down from generation to generation just under an industrial uh, civilization where individualism has been completely erased. And so the change of the system has to come from the bottom up. And that means decolonization and decolonization means strong acts of community. Mm -hmm. Way to end it. I think that's I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today on the People's Forum. 
the Citizens Forum. I'd like to ask you to join us again next week on Wednesday. Thanks, Thank guys. you very kindly. Thank you.